As the Israel-Hamas war intensifies, Israeli universities have been forced to push back the start of classes this week. Ben-Gurion University, one of Israel's leading research universities, located just 25 miles from Gaza, has turned its facility into a makeshift military post with ex inexperienced medical students treating war wounds. Joining us now is Daniel Shemovitz, president of Ben Gurion University of the Negev. We appreciate your time, sir. I'm so sorry for the loss, I understand, of students and professors and members of your community. Uh, do you know how many have been killed so far? And if you will also take us inside the university, the dorm rooms and the classrooms and what it looks like there. Thanks very much, Amara. Good morning to everyone. Um, yeah, it's it, we have two stories going on here at the same time. On the one hand, we have a story of atrocities, of death. We have over 50 casualties, uh, several students held hostage in the, in, uh, in the Gaza Strip. Um, incredibly awful, grotesque stories of a, of a social worker from our HR department that she and her husband and two daughters burned to death in their cars. They were trying to escape from camping on the beach. And at the same time, a story of resilience, where the university has come together to really be a logistics center for the entire South. Our university was put here 53 years ago by David Ben-Gurion to develop the Negev, Israel's poorest region. And if I would take your, if you had your cameraman here right now, I could take you into our student union, a student union which normally has ping pong tables and and, and foosball and students on their computers eating and doing whatever students normally do. There are hundreds of students who are collecting clothes, wet ones, diapers, food, um, baby carriages to be distributed to the people who have been really most seriously affected by what's going on. Our students in the medical students, 500 medical students pushed into duty at our hospital treating the more than 900 victims who came in um, having to deal with wounds that they have yet been trained to do. 900 people came into the hospital within just a number of hours. It's unbelievable, but the resilience is just incredible. Yeah, I read um, that one of the uh, medical students was called up to the uh, medical center nearby and said, I'd never seen a gunshot wound before, and then I saw many. Uh, because of uh, what had happened nearby. Let me ask you about the conversations that are happening on campus, because while we are seeing uh, protests and uh, demonstrations of support for both uh, Israelis and Palestinians on college campuses here in the U.S., you have a, a pretty significant Arab-Israeli population and student uh, body, a portion there at Ben Gurion University. Take us inside some of the conversations that you are having there, those students are having on campus about what happened. So, yeah, so sorry, I was having a little bit of trouble hearing because we had a little bit of a technical difficulty. But if I understood correctly, um, you're talking about the, um, the, 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 comp the complicated issues we have on campus. Well, first of all, we need to realize that the first casualties of this attack to reach our hospital were Bedouin Arab citizens of Israel who live outside of Beersheba, mm -hmm. um, who were burned in their houses by the missiles that destroyed them. So these attacks do not discriminate between Arab and Jew. Yes, the vast majority of people who were killed were Jewish Israelis, but Arab Israelis, Muslim Israelis, Christians, tourists, Workers have all been mutilated by in these attacks. I, um, I want to point. I won't be naive. Yeah, go ahead. Please. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off because we're running out of time. But I did want to ask you this: uh, among the 900 victims that entered the hospital, I understand that one was uh, a Hamas gunman uh, who was treated for a wound. Tell me more about that. And of course, you know, I'm sure there were ethical uh, dilemmas and conversations uh, regarding this gunman and where he is now. Well, there were no ethical dilemmas about it because when someone takes the Hippocratic Oath in Israel, we treat everybody. The doctors, I mean, I'm not saying it was easy for them, but they treated this wounded terrorist, this man who an hour earlier was cutting the throats of people, shooting them at point blank range and saved his life. And he was in a bed right next to one of the victims who he may have been the person who mutilated. Um, he was, after his life was stabilized, he was taken to a military hospital. But that's what we do in Israel. We try to maintain a human face 
in everything because if we lose our humanity, then yeah. everything is lost. And if we can maintain our humanity, which we're doing at Ben Gurion University in the yeah. face of such destruction, then that gives us hope for the future. Daniel Shemovitz, president of Ben Gurion University, thank you so much for your time and your story. And a quick programming note CNN's Jake yeah. Tapper will talk uh, to White House.